This is an introduction to disease modeling with cells, a new laboratory technique using stem cells. We are going to go through why we do it, what it is, and how to do it. So, why do we want to model diseases? In order to be able to cure diseases, it's vital we understand the cause of the illness. Investigating the underlying causes can help us to find a cure. Okay, that sounds great on paper, but it's not that simple. We are studying disease in the human body. The problem being the human body is fantastically complicated. We're all made up of loads of squidgy bits and we've all lived very different lives. This presents a huge challenge in studying the cause of disease and also how to treat them. It might be easier to explain with an example. Let's take an average person. Now, he gets sick, then he gets really sick. But what made him sick? Was it bad luck? A bad diet? Maybe too much junk food? Maybe he lived somewhere polluted, or he could have inherited it from one or both of his parents. It could be a combination of one, two, three, or all four of these different factors. This means we don't even know the cause, and not knowing the cause means we don't know where to look. It leaves us with a wealth of questions and uncertainties. A big problem facing research today is one of lack of supply. What if there's only one patient who's sick in this way? We can't really keep jabbing needles into them and trying out different ideas. But what if we had more patients? Thousands and thousands. We could start to look for similarities and patterns and try loads of different treatments. But that's not normally possible. We don't have thousands of people to experiment on, nor do we have huge sums of money. And we want to do this quickly. So what can we do? What we do is we model the disease and perform tests on the model. That means that we're not testing directly on the sick person, but we're recreating how their body works as best we can. And there are different types of modeling. Firstly, there's computer modeling, which uses mathematical models and algorithms to try and understand a complex system. The system in this case being a human being. Then there's animal modeling, which uses animals that display human-like symptoms. Or finally, there's cell modeling. And this is what we're going to talk about today, which is using cells taken directly from a human for analysis. So what can we do with this? If we take a sample from a healthy person, we'd expect to find their cells in good health. From someone who's sick, then there could well be a difference in some or all of the cells of the patient, and this difference might have clues to the illness. Now, with that sick cell, we can take it into a laboratory and multiply it thousands and thousands of times. It's a bit like having thousands and thousands of patients. And this is where it becomes modeling. We're no longer directly assessing our patients. Instead, there's a system that can be experimented on. And we can separate them into groups and see if any of the four factors mentioned before have an effect. So we approach the problem of curing a human, which is so complicated we often don't know where to start to look for solutions, by understanding what's happening on a cellular level and then we start to build up a picture. Disease modeling is making huge discoveries and getting better and more refined daily, but it also minimizes the risks and uncertainties when it comes to testing on humans. 